speaking up and active, people active in their communities, that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with Rochester. Rochester Indeed. You're watching Indie TV. I'm the Barefoot host, Dawn, and today's topic, we're going to talk about why there's a boycott at Rochester Plaza Hotel and how the community can get involved. And here to talk about this topic today, thank you for coming. We have Karn and Maggie, and Maggie works as an intern with Unite, and Karn is with Clue, a leader of Clue. I want you both to lay out for us uh, what is Clue and what is Unite, and we'll begin the conversation there. Uh, huh? Clue is the acronym for Clergy and Laity United for Economic Justice, and our primary work is around helping to alleviate working poverty. Um, you want to say what Unite is? Unite, is, Unite here is um, Hospitality and Textile Workers Union, and if there were a union adopted at the Rochester Plaza Hotel, Unite would be the union that would collectively bargain on behalf of the workers. Okay, and when did this start? Now, this has been going on for some time. Could you give us a little timeline of uh, how this came about and how Clue got involved? Sure. This has been going on for about two years now, um, at least the beginning of the process. Uh, and it started pretty much because there were workers at the at what was formerly known as the Crown Plaza Hotel, now known as the Rochester Plaza Hotel, who uh, were interested in being able to have a union at the at the hotel. So the more they talked about it, the more they got retaliation from management, the more they got intimidated, the more they got threatened with all kinds of you know potentially losing their job. Um, and that they found that they didn't have really kind of an equal playing field of information that they could give to their other workers. So what happened was they found the more they kind of got squelched in with even being able to have the conversation with other workers, they realized they needed the community support and another option in order to be able to have just an equal playing field um, in order to decide for themselves whether or not they want a union or not. So when I say that their employee was threatening them or intimidating them, you know, they'd have mandatory meetings against any kind of union, which the workers couldn't have a meeting where they gathered everybody to say, well, here's how a union might be good for you. So what they asked us to do, and they, you know, with the help from Unite Here, was they gathered a number of clergy in town and said, we, it would be awesome if you guys would put together community standards. We are willing to be able to abide by them. Uh, we'll probably uh, have to fix the mic before we go on. Just mm -hmm. clip it right back in. Thank you. So uh, we're willing to be able to abide by those community standards. The union said that. The workers said that. And you know, there are basic things like a principle of freedom from retaliation and intimidation from your employer. Freedom, uh, principle of freedom from coercion principle of equal access to information, you know, it's equal posting rights. So when you go to check out run, you know, your timesheet, it has equal information about both sides. Principle of open and reasonable debate, principle of truthfulness, that everybody will be upfront about what it is that they're doing, principle of timely response, and finally the last one is principle of freedom from outside harassment. Sometimes unions have, you know, like promised to somebody something if uh, they join the union. Like, I, for sure, you'll get a $15 wage. So all sides agreed to it except management. So a number of us on the clergy team went and met with management four times over a period of eight months, and at the end of it, they refused to be able to sign the community standards. 
Uh, we also flew down to New Jersey to meet with Dr. Wei, who's the owner of the hotel, and we couldn't get in with him. Is that when you decided to move forward with the boycott after uh, they? After we realized pretty much that, you know, we weren't going to move forward. They weren't going to come to this on some kind of uh, mutual agreement that this was in the best interest of everybody. Um, and that the only way that they were potentially going to get there was to have some economic hit to them. So we said we were going to call the boycott on March 1st. And we have, in the meantime, we've had uh, phone conversations with all the customers of the Crown uh, with, uh, and, and made delegations to a number of organizations that are customers of the Crown, asking them to honor the boycott. In other words, don't cross the picket line, don't give your business to the Crown. And Maggie, how does Unite then work um, in conjunction with Clue and what are the things you're doing as an intern and what is the response that you're getting? Um, as an intern, I spend 25 hours a week on the picket line and Clue is in support of the clergy. Um, they want the workers of the plaza to know that members of their community support them, that there are people who are agents of the union who are dispersing information about what they're going through, the injustice of NLRB laws, the kind of election that they would face, and to make sure that people have this kind of information. Um, one of the big misconceptions that we face on the picket line is people assume that we work at the hotel. And something that I'd like to express, you know, and, and I think that's different than what you usually see in terms of strikes and in terms of, you know, union actions, because this isn't led by the union. We're in support of the clergy. The clergy are the ones that called this boycott. Is that if this is a campaign to address working poverty and there's no union to represent workers, then how can we possibly expect workers to step foot and take that risk and to come out on the picket line unless they see members of their community there in support of their rights? It's to show workers, Unite is trying to show workers that members of their community care about them, that they care about the standards to which they're held, that they care about the standards to which management is held, and that we know that what's happening to them is unfair. And who are the people, the workers that are wanting to organize? Is it a, a multi-tiered um, staff within the Well, I think hotel? that, you know, I'm not a worker of the hotel, and to speak to them in their organizational process would be presumptuous of me. I know that there is a presence in the hotel, and I'm not an organizer of the campaign. My role is to be out there with a picket sign and flyers and to do community outreach to people that are driving in and out and walking by, um, you know, to encourage people in Rochester. If you know somebody that's getting married, encourage them to have their reception somewhere else. If you have a convention, reschedule your convention. We're um, going to talk more about this when we come back. We do have to okay. take a break. We're talking about the boycott at the Plaza Hotel. Stay tuned. Oh, hi. I'm Steve Heiss. I'm the producer and editor of the Indie Media Newsreel, which is the program you're watching right now. Or, well, I mean... Very, very important message. So listen very carefully. Not now, now. Because now, now, I'm recording this, and then I have to edit it. And But, but I mean, for your now, right now, as you're watching this, it's now. Um... Well, anyway, um... Newsreel is a monthly program that's been in production for about seven years. Every month, activist video producers from around the country, around the world even, send in video segments about events in their communities. Events where people are standing up for what they believe in and trying to make a difference in the world. However, we have a problem. Lately, for whatever reason, when I sit down toward the end of the month to work on putting together the next month's program, I look at the pile of submissions sent to me and, well, that pile's been pretty empty. For some reason, people just aren't sending very much in. And I'm not sure why, but I need contributions to make the show happen. I can't just make it out of thin air. I need other people's documentaries. Little documentaries. Two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes about things going on around them in their communities. So if you're watching this and you like this program, maybe you can help. Maybe you make videos or know someone who does. Someone who's involved with a local struggle and wants to document that struggle. Or maybe someone who's already making short little documentaries and wants more opportunities 
to get the word out about what they're doing. There's more details about this project at newsreel.indymedia.org. Help spread the word. Thanks for your help and thanks for watching. Bye. Indie TV, you're here with us, uh, barefoot and all. This is uh, Blemish Media at its best, and we're going through this, uh, you know, very interesting detailed process of the boycott at the Rochester Plaza Hotel. And we're talking with two organizers of this boycott. One is an intern with Unite Maggie, and we have Karn here with Clue. And this is interesting to have a clergy-led boycott. Um, what are you hoping the boycott um, will accomplish, and why is it the clergy community that's coming out in such strong force right now around this? Well, I think if you look at any of our religious traditions at its very core is lifting up the problems of uh, poverty, no matter what time you're looking at, whether that's 2,000 years ago or 5,000 years ago, and that part of religious conviction is saying that we will help create justice within our communities in order to help people have a higher standard of living. And Karen, you've heard a lot from the workers that are in the plaza because they've come forward asking for support on this. What right. are the workers saying about the working conditions and why this particular uh, establishment, when there's probably many that are in pretty uh, low standard working conditions and working poverty right. levels? I, I think one of the reasons that they were interested in having, even having a discussion about the union is because they have, uh, you, you know, if I'm sitting with my boss, and, I, and I'm saying, I want to get paid more than what it is that I do. I want to be held accountable to 12 rooms, which you told me I had to clean, and now I'm cleaning 20 rooms. There's a difference between me talking to my boss about that, who can say, well, that's fine, but you're out of here, and, you know, me with a whole bunch of, uh, with 20 other housekeepers who are saying, you know, you hired me for 12 rooms, and I'm cleaning 19 rooms. Um, and over and over again, you know, I've listened to maybe uh, close to about 50 workers at various different times. Some at um, my church and where my congregation has heard about their working conditions, but then also times where we were pulled together to be able to listen to a larger group of them. Mm -hmm. And all of them are not really, th none of them are paid a living wage. Uh, the other piece about this and why the Plaza Hotel, not only do the workers need help to be able to do the fight within the uh, hotel and have somebody else kind of be the public presence of saying why is it important for a community to stand behind people's democratic right in order to be able to decide for themselves whether or not they want a union or not, is the other aspect that this hotel in particular has received about $3.5 million of federal and state money in order to help alleviate poverty. Um, now, in our mind, I think we feel like it, that would mean uh, relative to helping lift the wages of those who are making $12,500 a year working full time, um, which is way below the poverty line. What were they supposed to do with that money, that $3.5 well, million? You know, it's kind of vague, right? Um, but uh, I think if you think about how to alleviate poverty would mean that it doesn't go into the pockets of the management or of the owners of the hotel. It, it actually goes to the workers who were, uh, you know, I think most of us would be under the impression that that should go to people that would help raise their standard of living. So Maggie, tell us about what the picket line is like and um, what you're experiencing out there, both from, I guess, workers that you've encountered or uh, workers from other establishments nearby or people on the street, how is that? Um, the biggest challenge on the picket line is making people understand that we're there about the process. We're not there to push a union. Um, we're there to make sure that the people in the Rochester Plaza who work as hard as they do and are paid as little as they are have access to all of the information so that they can decide whether or not a union would make their lives better. If they had access to all the information and decided against unionization, that, you know, that would be fine. We want people, to, you know, the people in there deserve to have all of the information. 
and often what you encounter is people who have had bad experiences with unions or don't understand why we're there. We have a lot of people who walk up and down the street every day and they don't understand why we're still there. And it's very difficult to explain to people that, you know, the picketers could be gone today. I could be done on the picket line today if the manager and owner of the Rochester Plaza Hotel gave his workers the respect that they deserve and gave them full access to information. Um, I had a very heated exchange with a woman who used to be a contract worker at the hotel. She used to get 40 hours a week and now she gets none. And it was very difficult to explain to her that, you know, part of having equal access to information is understanding why you don't get hours. A large part of the reason why she didn't get hours anymore is that the Rochester Plaza Hotel is no longer a Crown Plaza Hotel. And that doesn't have to do, there's no legal connection between that and the boycott. That has to do with reasons that are outside of the control of the union and of CLU. And that has had, you know, in the manager of the hotel's own words, in legal documents, a devastating financial effect on the Crown. But because the management has complete control over the flow of information to their workers, they allow workers to believe that the boycott and the picketers are the reason why there's been a change in their hours. And so it's very difficult for us to reach out to workers and I hope that some of them see this and realize that we're there for them. We're there because they deserve information and because there are members of their community who care about the conditions that they face. Can you briefly describe what the Employee Free Choice Act is and how that would change the dynamics? The Employee Free Choice Act is legislation that's proposed that would level the playing field between management and um, the union and would remove the really pro-management process that exists currently under the NLRB, it would be very similar to the standards that CLU has drafted, which I think really is a testament to CLU that they've said, you know, we're not satisfied to rest on an unjust law and that just because there's a broken law on the books doesn't mean that companies shouldn't be held responsible to treat their employees equitably. And when we come back, we're going to talk about NLRB, and we're going to talk about what people can do in the community to support this. And uh, stay tuned. You're watching Indy TV, rochester.indymedia.org. And thank you. Shout out to all the Indy Media crew members that are making this show possible. See you in a bit. lights on in here? If you need light to access this building, you can have your doctor certify your disability, then ask for special accommodation. Equal access is a right, not a privilege. I'm John Schorsch. I'm Sarah Green. I'm Deborah Peterson. And I'm Donna Lawrence. Ow! Oof! Indie TV, and today we're talking about the boycott at the Rochester Plaza Hotel with Reverend Karn Anderson and Maggie Spolina. Um, now, Reverend Anderson, will you please tell us uh, more about Clue as far as why the clergy and the connection with NLRB, and what is NLRB, just to clarify? Yeah, it's a it's a little complicating, so I hope I can do this relatively quickly. But uh, the NLRB is the National Labor relations board and they've kind of been the one that has regulated and kept track of all employees and set the rules and the laws about employees and businesses when they want to form a union. Problem is that what is offered most often to workers is an NRLB election and what uh, we're kind of saying is uh, the management of the hotel keeps saying that there is a, a you know, um, a law in the books that is an NRLB election. Like, I don't understand why people are upset about that. Problem is, the law is not uh, fair or just. It, it would be like saying um, Jim Crow laws, because they're on the books, means that they're a just law. It's the same deal. And that is why the clergy are 
called into this to say, you know, it's, it's um, incumbent upon a community to be able to uh, create movements that then get the wind of politicians so that they understand that uh, a community is uh, open and uh, wants to represent the best of what we have to offer everybody from all, from all sides and that there are certain laws that should just not be around anymore because they're unjust, which is an NRLB process. In other words, this election process is, is kind of like if the two of us were running for a campaign, right? And uh, I would get to say everything about her position without her ever telling you what it is that she, she's, uh, she believes in. Um, I also, she could also stand on the perimeter of where it is that her district was, but she couldn't come into that district to be able to pass out flyers. Um, I, there's no equal debate, there's no, and it's a six weeks process. It's even such things as having management walk up next to an employee when they drop their, uh, uh, you know, ballot into a box. Now, I think in this country, if we ever said that that would be not intimidating or threatening to somebody who holds your, you know, your entire livelihood in their hands, uh, would be absurd. We would never do that. Have people been out and out fired for trying to get involved? They, into uh, people have been written up numerous times. One of the problems with the NRLB right now is so they can be written up, then they do an investigation, take six, seven months to be able to get there, then they present it to the uh, hotel management and they can say, yeah, we did that wrong, we did that wrong, we did that wrong, oh, and we'll, f we'll hire back that person but they have to have, their, there's no admission of guilt on their part. And then the next day, they can go ahead and go do the same thing all over again. Mm -hmm. So the process is broken, and that is why we need standards as we put together in order for it to be a fair process. So how long do you, what, what will a victory be in this campaign, Maggie? A victory would be for the management of the Rochester Plaza Hotel to agree to this fair process. You know, one of the things that Richard Bensinger said when he came here and spoke with Louise Waters, he said it shouldn't be an act of courage for an employee to support a union. What we're looking for is employees who support the union to have a free platform in order to speak, to have equality, equal access to information, and that's all. That would be a victory for this campaign. Um, whatever the workers autonomously decided was in their best interest would be their decision. No one is better qualified to decide what's best for the workers than the workers, but they deserve the information to make that decision well. And once this d process was, if a democratic process were to be, uh, you know, implemented, what is the relationship then with Clue? What happens to Clue and how does this continue with the plaza and, you know, the, the continued relationship here on out? I think if, if everybody would agree to a fair process, we'd have to call in some outside arbitrator to come and negotiate what, what that fair process would look like and, and how they'd go about doing that. And, and then we'd kind of step back. Then we'd stop contacting customers. We'd stop, you know, uh, having phone, deli or phone banking to all the customers around the country to say, don't come and use the hotel. We would. It'd be like ceasing and desisting, kind of, you know? We, we would be pulled off. And Maggie, what would you like to say to the people that you hand out flyers to and you're out there picketing, maybe they don't have time or they're frustrated by this? What do you want to say to the community in general um, about What this? I would say to the community is that working poverty is an issue that it is everyone's responsibility to care about. Whether you fall below the poverty line or not, we are one community. And a unification of the Rochester community would be in the best interests of everyone. And, you know, it's 30 seconds to stop and take a piece of paper and read it. And the standards that are being asked for by Clue are imminently reasonable. Um, and I think that for people to get on board with this campaign and care about the people that work at the Rochester Plaza Hotel, their struggle reflects the struggle of many of us in Rochester who work very, very hard and our income still falls below the poverty line. You know, there are people that in our Rochester community that work two and three jobs to support their families. And at this point, we all have to take responsibility for each other. If we don't have some sense of community to say our neighbors work in the Rochester Plaza a hotel they work very hard and they make twelve thousand five hundred dollars a year and we're not obligated to care we're not ob you know we are obligated to care 
We are obligated to care enough to move our business elsewhere. You know, one of the, my belief is one of the very few powers that we have left in the United States is your buying power. It's your dollar power. So put your dollar somewhere else until they do right by their people. And the minute that they do right by their people, go back. They weren't right. Go then, back then and go support them celebrate again. Celebrate it. Yeah. Absolutely. You support bet. businesses that do the right thing. Well, we care. Indie TV cares. Thank you, Reverend Karn. Thank you, Maggie. Do not go into the Plaza Hotel until this boycott is settled, until workers have a fair wage and the right working conditions. Indie TV, stay tuned for next week.